one of the issues that we're going to face as a species, if you will, is as we move to electrification, you know, everyone's going to be buying a whole mountain of batteries, and at some point those batteries are going to wear out, and we're going to have to figure out what to do with them. So what we've developed with our BCS or now cell driver is a way of really effectively using those used batteries. Yeah, my name is Eric Custard, uh, the CTO here at XRO. Almost all energy storage systems, whether it's in a car, because at the end of the day, the battery bank in a car is an energy storage system, right? It, it doesn't produce energy. You, you put it in, it's like a tank, right? You fill it up and then you can use it again. They all work the same way. You string a bunch of cells in series to get the voltage that you want. They all have the same issue that as the batteries degrade, the weakest cell limits the full capacity of the pack. So whether it's a stationary energy storage system, whether it's a battery pack in a car, or whether it's the battery pack on your battery drill, they all work on more or less the same principle, which is just a good old string of series cells. They might have some you know, passive reactive balancing in there or whatever, but it's fairly limited in what it can do. The cell driver takes a completely different approach. It's fundamentally an AC system. So we connect to the grid for vehicle systems, there would be a different story, it'd be a variable DC system. But what we're doing is instead of using the cells to produce a DC output, like on an energy storage, this, you know, 800 volt DC bank or whatever, and then you have to have an inverter to then convert that DC into AC for connecting to the grid. What the, the cell driver does is it's now addressing each cell individually and we bring these voltages together on a time dependent basis to create whatever voltage waveforms that we want. So the cells are no longer being driven DC, they're being driven essentially by AC, which gives us the ability to you know, change the ampere seconds being applied to each cell and then construct any waveform we want. So we don't have an inverter, the batteries are essentially doing that for us. And that's also the mechanism that allows us to operate cells at different capacities, different life and so on. So as the pack kind of goes through its life, you end up with some cells which now essentially become the weak link in the chain, right? Because you've now got one or two cells or maybe five cells, however many, that are now have a significantly lower capacity than, than the rest of the pack. And that lower capacity cell essentially constrains the rest of the pack to the capacity of those low capacity cells. And then at some point, of course, you know, you've got this battery pack which has usable capacity left, but you're being hamstrung by the weakest cells. And at some point that limits the pack to the point where it you know, can no longer meet the range or the application or whatever, and then it has to, you have to throw out the battery. So what we do is we recognize that divergence in capacity. We said, okay, well, what do we do with those cells then? And how do we utilize those cells? Because just throwing them away or even recycling the batteries already at this stage seems kind of wasteful, especially since they've still got a good chunk of life left in them. So it'd be a shame, you know? So, what we've developed is a technology that, that essentially works with varying capacity cells, and especially as the cells continue diverging. Like, so let's take, we, we take Second Life batteries and we start using them in energy storage, they're gonna get continuously used, which means they're gonna continue degrading. But our system allows us to now run each group of cells or each cell based on its life. So we can undiverge those cells. We can kind of bring them back together. benefits that the cell driver brings is once the second life cells become available the cost will be dramatically lower because instead of buying brand new batteries to fill this the cell driver up and give you the storage capacity we can use used cells from evs or what have you the safety is actually a big one because we're individually controlling cells we're monitoring each individual cell we're actively you know there's not even active balancing is like kind of underrating what we're doing is we're deeply controlling the state of each each cell, which means, you know, we're actively preventing thermal runaway and we're able to reach much deeper levels of charge and discharge on these cells. Most normally energy storage systems go between 10 and 90, so they'll go down to a 10% depth of discharge and up to 90% charge, but whereas because of our, the fidelity of the control that we have over each cell, we can charge each cell to 100% and we can discharge them to, to more or less 0%. You get a little bit more capacity per capacity, if that makes sense, right? Because if you have a 100 kilowatt hour pack, if you're going between 10 and 90, you've actually only got 80 kilowatt hours of usable capacity. Whereas if you're you know, going from zero to 100%, you've got that full 100 kilowatt capacity available. Because of the other stuff that's going on in the cell driver, like the cell resting, the, the active balancing of the cells, the fact that we're 
managing the amp hours out of each cell based on its state of health, it essentially extends the life of those batteries. And because we're driving each cell individually, there's redundancy. So if one cell goes bad, the whole system doesn't go down, right? You can keep operating. So there's a certain level of uptime security. So if you have a mission critical application, I don't know, hospitals and other kinds of applications where you absolutely cannot lose power. Actually flight applications are another great example, right? If you have a, any electric plane, you really don't want your battery to stop. So having that redundancy and the safety functions in there that allows the battery pack to keep on truck and if one cell fails, is a, I think it's a quite a big one.